It's one of the deadliest terror organizations in the world. Al-Shabaab first appeared in 2006 as the armed wing of the Islamic Courts Union, which ruled Somalia, but was later driven out. Now an affiliate of Al-Qaeda, it's thought to have between 7,000 and 9,000 members and is banned by several countries, including the US and UK. And despite its name meaning the youngsters in Arabic, it has a lot of experience in what it does. In the past decade, Al-Shabaab has carried out hundreds of attacks in Somalia and neighbouring Kenya and killed and wounded thousands of people, many of them in the past two years. Its leader is Ahmad Umar and the US Secretary of State has a bounty of $6 million on his head. Although the group has lost control of most towns and cities in Somalia, it still rules many rural regions, some of which have already suffered years of drought, famine and fear. You killed many innocent Somalis and destroyed their wealth. I warn you against conducting further evil actions. The Somali government has struggled to tackle Al-Shabaab's threat for years, despite help from a powerful ally. Our governments signed an action plan yesterday in which we'll support Kenya's efforts to strengthen its judiciary, police and border security. We also discussed broader efforts to counter violent extremism here in Kenya and around the world. It's been called one of America's silent wars. During his 2015 visit to Africa, Barack Obama promised to help Kenya and Somalia deal with Al-Shabaab using drone strikes and raids, and he did so 50 times. That support has continued under U.S. President Donald Trump. Since March, Washington said U.S. troops can now carry out direct airstrikes against Al-Shabaab as long as they let the Somali government know first. One such attack killed senior Al-Shabaab member Ali Mohammed Hussein in July. It was seen as a big blow to the group. Then in August, Mukhtar Robo, one of the founding members of Al-Shabaab, surrendered. But civilians have also been killed. Last week in a village near Mogadishu, Somali forces backed by US troops killed 10 people, including three children, in a raid that was supposed to target militants. And despite being given $2 billion in foreign aid in 2013, the Somali government has failed to put in basic structures like a formal justice system or unite warring clans taking advantage of the ongoing chaos. Al-Shabaab's attacks have intensified in recent months, adding to the challenges facing a government that's still struggling to achieve stability after more than 20 years. Vanessa Keneally, The Newsmakers. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now from London by David Otto. He's a senior counterterrorism advisor for Global Risk International. And from Washington, D.C., Herman Cohen. He was the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs under George H.W. Bush. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. David Otto, let me start with you. This raid that ended up killing thank civilians you. in Somalia, is that an anomaly, a big mistake, or is it something that Somalis are, are, are getting used to? I think, first of all, you know, it's, um, it's, a very, it's a tragic incident, you know, and as we've known, um, one of the things which actually uh, 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 makes terrorist organizations or insurgents, you know, to proliferate is when, you know, civilians, you know, get hurt. And insurgents like um, Al-Shabaab would use that as a strategy to recruit uh, more angry, you know, civilians. You know, and as we know, Al-Shabaab is an organization that came as a result, you know, of, uh, of a population that, you know, um, did not have a, a particular say in, in what the government, you know, had to offer. You know, it's, it's an insurgent organization that has grown up from, you know, uh, a very, very instable uh, a government. So when you see these kind of raids, which have been carried out by, you know, the, um, uh, the Somalian army, under the Amisim, the Al-Shabaab looks at this as, you know, a foreign, you know, intervention, because mind you that Amisim is, is highly sponsored by, you know, um, uh, donors, you know, including, you know, the U.S. and, and the European Union and, and China. So I think, you know, this kind of manifestation uh, of, uh, uh, of targeting uh, Al-Shabaab leaders, you know, um, leadership decapitation and targeted strikes, you know, and then, you know, in the event of that, you know, killing civilians, 
is, is highly counterproductive, and this is what Al-Shabaab mm -hmm. really wants to see in terms of you know, continuing its insurgency that has lasted for more than a decade now. Yeah. Herman Cohen, I want you to have a listen to what Ali Noor, who's the deputy governor of Lower Shabela region, had to say after this raid. Let's have a little listen, and I have a question for you off the back of that. We confirm that the dead people were not al-Shabaab. They were not fighters, but they were civilian people who were working inside their farms at the time of their killing. So, Herman, would you agree with David that, you know, the, the more these sorts of things happen, these U.S.-backed raids, particularly the fact that they're American-backed Somali army raids, and the more they tend to kill innocent people, the more you're just going to regenerate um, the insurgency. You're going to create more sympathy for the terror groups, and you're going to create more terrorists. How does that help anyone? Uh, I totally disagree with that. In the 10 years of al-Shabaab operating in Somalia, they're totally hated by the Somali people. Wherever they were in charge, whether it was Mogadishu or Kismayo, their repression of the Somali people was so terrible that when foreign troops came in, say Ethiopians or Kenyans, they were welcomed by the Somali people. So I don't see al-Shabaab recruiting anymore. They are on the wane because the Somali people hate them, and they, they totally welcome foreign troops coming in to fight Shabaab. David Otto? Does that ring true? Yes, but uh, Herman, I mean, one of the most important things which, uh, which we have to understand is, you know, no terrorist organization, uh, uh, especially Al-Shabaab, would survive, you know, without the support of the people. The, 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 the fact that people, um, you, you're saying that, you know, people are actually um, not in, in, uh, in accordance with, you know, Al-Shabaab is, is actually not true because, you know, uh, Somali is not just made up of Mogadishu. And, and if you visit some of these areas in the north where Al-Shabaab is actually based, you see that, you know, the, the, the lack of governance means Al-Shabaab is, is actually a proxy government which provides, you know, services that, you know, the government is unable to pro provide to the people. And this has actually, you know, given Al-Shabaab, you know, the, the, the impetus, you know, to continue to, you know, carry out these attacks okay. successfully and hiding within the, uh, within the communities. Okay, so Herman Cohen... Uh, this is not a new theory, but within that vacuum, you have a failed state or failing state. I mean, Somalia has been trying so hard over the past 30 years. And in that vacuum, you have these groups. I mean, you remember the well from which Al-Shabaab had sprung, the Islamic courts, were fairly su successful and popular in certain parts of the country because they brought law and order. You would accept that, right? I accept the Islamic courts was an excellent organization and unfortunately, it was taken over by extremists uh, supported by missionaries coming in from Sudan. And it became a total uh, uh, satellite of the Islamic State. And wherever the Shabaab has ruled, the Somali people are rejecting them because it's so terrible to be under Shabaab. And I think they welcome, they welcome foreign troops. Now, the Somali army is just starting to get trained, and it's starting to operate, and they're going to make a lot of mistakes. Uh, there is a government in power now. It's very weak. It needs more support, but it's gaining strength. And I think slowly but surely, the government is going to be able to provide services. Yep. And it's up to the Yeah, but Herman, what I think, one of the things we... Sorry to interrupt them. you there, Herman, but I have to. Um, you know, the, what one has to understand is that, you know, when you look at the targets, you know, that Al-Shabaab really chooses, Al-Shabaab does not actually, you know, directly attack civilians. You know, most of Al-Shabaab's target are either, you know, the Somalian army or the Amisom forces, and, and also uh, Western targets. You know, if you look at the attacks that Al-Shabaab carried out of the region, for example, in 2010, they carried out an attack in, in Uganda. One of the Al-Shabaab leaders said, you know, whatever makes Uganda cry makes us happy. Right. But, you know, they've carried David, out, you know, those David, kind of attacks David, not necessarily, in, in Kenya David, as well. Yeah. Certainly. David, and, they're not necessarily and, uh, attacking... Yeah, but they attack... Yeah, they, they've beheaded villages they attack across shopping, the border in Kenya. They attack recently, shopping right? malls oh, course, in Kenya. Right. That is not government. Yes, that yes, is civilians. they attack shopping malls in Kenya. Yeah, but these shopping malls which they attacked in Kenya was a symbol 
of right. you know the West, you know these shopping malls, ah, they, you know they attack this particular okay. shopping so mall David, because you know it, it so would David, have then that allow is me to generate the kind of Herman, Herman, give me a second. Nonsense. Shabab is just Sh terrorism. Certainly. Herman, give me a and second. It's sponsored by the Islamic State. Certainly. Stop apologizing for these. Okay, so, so Herman, give me a second. Monsters. I'm going to add weight. I'm going to add weight to your argument here, David. Those villagers who were beheaded just across the border in a small little village in Kenya, what were they a symbol of, David? Well, you know, you know uh, we are not supporting that. You know, we're not saying that exclusively Al-Shabaab does not behead villagers. But Al-Shabaab does that, you know, when, you know, they, they, they see these people as traitors. You know, if you look at the, the way uh, Boko Haram operates, he operates the same. If you look at the way ISIS operates, he operates the same. They, they see them as a symbol of, of, uh, of spying for, uh, on, on right. behalf of the West. Okay. You know, and that is why they attack them. They Certainly. do not attack them because and you know, a, they are just um, innocent okay. civilians. There's a broad net that they cast, and it seems as if after the fact, there's a lot of kind of, from, from their perspective, and I'm not, I'm not blaming you, David, from their perspective, they find a justification no matter who they attack. Herman, let's kind of bring this back to the beginning, and let me ask you about the American interests when it comes to Somalia. As somebody who's been around for a long, long time, you served under George Bush Sr., You've seen the Africa policy unfold. You've seen groups like Al-Shabaab emerge and become, I don't know, metastasize and become really scary. They're now allied to Al-Qaeda. Do you think that the Trump administration is doing the right thing by supporting these raids and then also dropping a bomb now and then from the air? Well, the main fight against Al-Shabaab is by the African Union and the various countries in Africa that are on the ground. The U.S. has a base in Djibouti, and from that base, they are supporting the African Union operation. And this is done mainly through air power. They target individual Shabaab leaders and bomb them either with drones or with aircraft. Also, there's an occasional raid by special forces from Djibouti. It's all very targeted. And I think the Trump administration is continuing exactly what the Obama administration was doing. Uh, I agree with it because the Af you know the African Union is is fighting Shabab and we're mm -hmm. supporting the African Union. This is not an American operation. No, certainly. But Herman, I mean, we've seen this before. It's almost ten years since I was speaking to American officials and others saying, you know, we're unleashing hell on on these groups and on Al Shabab, and the Ethiopians are unleashing hell on them, and they're on the run and it's a matter of time just before they're destroyed, and it only seems to get worse, not only within Somalia itself, but also across the border as the neighbors are targeted. So maybe that would be an opportunity to rethink it and say maybe this isn't working? I, don't, I disagree with that totally. Tell it is what. working. You know, El Shabaab was controlling Mogadishu. They were controlling Kismayo. They're totally out of these major areas. I think it's time for El Shabaab to start negotiating uh, with the new Somali government. They're not going to win. They're going to lose eventually. So it's time for them to stop the fighting and, and negotiate. Mm -hmm. There's no way they can continue this uh, I mean, I think this, that's a very good uh, point. Indefinitely. Okay, David, come in. Yeah, Herman, I think, I think Herman is making a very good point in, 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 in that, you know, they, this is time for Al-Shabaab to start negotiating with the Somalian government. But what I think has to be done is the Somalian government has to be given full authority and exclusivity in terms of dealing with Al-Shabaab. Because as I said earlier on, most of the Al-Shabaab targets, you know, are Western-related targets, you know, and they, they, the Islamic courts were very good in terms of, and comparatively as well, in, in terms of the way that they handled um, uh, the, the, the governance in Somalia. And, and, but since the invasion of, you know, uh, foreigners, you know, and foreign influence in Somalia, Somalia has, you know, has seen its worst days. And, if that type of strategy, you know, is continued, you know, where we see uh, there, there is now the proliferation of direct attacks, you know, um, mm -hmm. of direct uh, targeted attacks by U.S. drones, you know, um, killing civilians, you know, this will not help the situation right. of the new administration. David, so besides, I, I think there has to be a direct. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to talk a bit, a, a bit more about talking and you know the defectors and so on. But besides killing civilians, the drone strikes also tend to kill high-ranking. Shabab men, uh, uh, members. You had this guy called Ali Jabal, who was also known as Ali Muhammad Hussein. He and uh, seven others were killed a couple weeks ago. The U.S. had a bunch of strikes in June, July, and 
and August. And so Shabab themselves are coming yes. out and saying, yes, this guy was very important and, you know, he was shaheed or, you know, he was, he was martyred in, in, in their opinion. So when they come out and say their high-ranking commanders were killed, it's a massive loss, isn't it? It yes. does show some level of value to the drone strikes or the airstrikes, doesn't it, David? Of course it does. It does show some, some level of value against the, uh, on the drone strikes. But what you have to understand is leadership decapitation itself has not been able to cure any insurgency group. You know, uh, Bin Laden was killed. You know, uh, you can name them. You know, so it is not a matter of you targeting the leaders alone. Um, I think what the, the, the Americans should be doing is to help towards a long-lasting solution that should be owned by the Somalians. You know, we know that, you know, in 2007, when the, the African was set up, it was set up, you know, purely for the interest of the United States, you know, because, you know, of the, the presence of China and other superpowers in Africa. So, you know, there, there is no hiding about this, mm -hmm. you know, but what we say is that, you know, we should stop a system where, you know, Somalia will be destabilized more and more, you know, because the strategy that the U.S. is using now in Somalia is not going to last. It's not sustainable, okay. and it continues to Herman empower Herman. our Shabab. Let's ask Herman. Herman, it's unsustainable, according to David. What do you think? Well, first of all, it's not a U.S. strategy. <clears throat> it's an African Union strategy, and they, they are slowly grinding down El Shabab. El Shabab was much stronger a few years ago. Now they're very weak, and I think it's time for the Somali government to propose talks, and I'm pretty sure the American government is encouraging them. Herman, let me ask you, what is the possibility? Because a lot of <clears throat> what drives U.S. foreign policy for, for being involved in uh, such conflicts is that uh, the United States wants to stop the possibility of an attack on the homeland. Is there any suggestion at all or intel at all that al-Shabaab is capable of attacking the United States' homeland? Well, you know, there is a significant Somali population in the United States, especially in the Minnesota area. And there are several young men from that group that went to Somalia uh, to join al-Shabaab. In fact, there was one of them who was a suicide bomber. So it's quite possible that they could stimulate attacks in the United States, although I doubt that will happen. Right. But the isn't, that a, domestic, isn't that a domestic law enforcement issue if you have American citizens who might want to plot attacks? Ultimately, it doesn't matter whether you're involved in the Horn of Africa or not. You still have to, to, to solve a domestic issue of homegrown terrorism. It is domestic, but it also is international because very a small percentage of individuals are stimulated by what's going on in Somalia. So if they're going to do an attack in the United States, it's because they want to support al-Shabaab. It's a very tiny thing, mm -hmm. but it's both domestic and international. And it's important that we wipe out the base of support in, in Somalia that these people in Minnesota are attracted to. David? Yeah, I think one thing, yeah, I think one thing we have to understand is, you know, there are, there are what you call homegrown terrorists and they are foreign fighters. You know, um, uh, some <clears> of these uh, individuals that um, Herman mentions, these are people that were born in America and, and they've grown up in America. In, in America. So uh, I think it has to be a, a matter of domestic policy to be able to stop these young people from being uh, vulnerable to attacks. In other words, if young people are leaving America to travel to Somalia, then it means America is shipping, um, you know, um, radicals, you know, to Somalia, not the other way around. So I think it's, it, what is important is for us to understand that, you know, the, 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 the idea of, of foreign policy the, it has to be well balanced, you know, right. because at the moment, you know, Somalia is taking the, the greatest, you know, of, of the, of the, of, 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 uh, of the blonde. So I think it's important for us to to be able to have a strategy whereby Somalians and Somalians alone have to be able to take upon this strategy. And okay. that, this and, is and what, what they're trying to do. So, yeah, know, and, and, uh, and forgive me for interrupting you because I have to wrap very soon, but forgive me for interrupting you there, there, there David. Very finally, what Somalia is trying to do domestically, they have this amnesty program where they give sort of 60 days for you to come clean. And a lot of people have actually turned themselves in and defected from al-Shabaab and They've been given a, a sense of amnesty. Do you find that encouraging? Well, I think it's encouraging. Um, um, and, and the reason why I think it's encouraging is because, you know, uh, we've always spoken about the need to have a dialogue with the warlords. I mean, these are the people that control, you know, the, the, the culture. These are the people that control the, the environment in which this insurgency takes place. 
You know, but in order for you to have a, a very comprehensive uh, dis disengagement, de-radicalization, reintegration program, you have to be able to show that you have the necessary infrastructures to be able to carry out those programs effectively. That is what, you know, all the militants who are thinking about exiting would be looking at. So it is important that, you know, yes, it's a good idea, but it's important that, you know, the Somalian government, instead of spending money on military uh, uh, drone strikes and, 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 and all that, you know, spends this money on looking on how to resolve these underlying issues and how to have uh, a, a, a dialogue system which is going to work well for the insurgents who are ready to exit. Mm -hmm. David Otto and Herman Cohen, I wish we had more time. This was really good. It was good to pick both your brains. But I thank you both for joining us. <laughs>